Ms. Whitefield. Hey, what's up everyone? Most of you seem to really enjoy the King of the Hill videos and they seem to do pretty well on my channel, so I figured, hey, why not make another one? So jumping right into it, we're going to be talking about the Season 9 episode, Mrs. Wakefield. You know, this episode. Yes, I want to die here. I promise not to be a nuisance. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This may be my least favorite episode of the entire series. You know when you're listening to a really good album, but then there's that one song that you always skip? This episode is that song for me, and I'll explain why a bit later. The episode follows an elderly woman who used to live at the Hills house, and then she returns so that she can die in it. But of course, Hank isn't having that. The problem with the episode is, every time Hank attempts to throw the woman out of the house and tell her no, all of his neighbors treat him like he's some type of villain. Anyway, without any further ado, this is Miss Wakefield. The episode starts how a lot of them do, with Hank, Boomhauer, Dale, and Bill drinking in the alley. And oh wait, I think I forgot to mention this is a Christmas episode, and I get it, it's not Christmas, but you know what, it's my channel and I can post whatever I want to. Anyway, while Hank is telling the guys about the Christmas party he's throwing, a taxi pulls up. Hank helps this old lady out of the taxi and she tells him that she used to live at his house many many years ago with her twin sister. Hank and Bobby walk out and Hank tells Miss Wakefield that they're going to go harvest a Christmas tree. She thanks Hank for taking such good care of the house and he invites her over for dinner before she drives off. I still cannot believe you invited that old woman over for dinner, Hank. That's like putting out a saucer of milk for a stray cat. One lap, you'll never get rid of her. Pause for a second. First of all, wow, foreshadowing. Secondly, this is one of the few times that I actually agree with Peggy. Like, don't invite this random lady that you've met for 30 seconds into your house. 80 years old or not, it's kind of weird. We fast forward to the next night at dinner time and Miss Wakefield is telling the family stories of when she was younger at the house. She is being very polite and giving Bobby great advice, but Peggy seems to see through that and says that they're out of coffee and it's getting close to bedtime. You remind me of my sister. So smart and pretty. Well, thank you. Oh, looky here. A new can of coffee. But of course, if you struck Peggy's ego, she'll switch up real fast. Meanwhile, Dale is trying to figure out what to get Nancy for Christmas, and then he has this bright idea where he could mail himself to her. What if I seal myself in a crate and have me delivered on Christmas Day to Nancy? Wait, do they have mail on Christmas? It wouldn't be very merry if I died in some distribution center. Bill recommends just taking her to a bed and breakfast, but then Dale has this idea of making his own bed and breakfast so that they can make money, the gift that keeps giving. Back at the Hills house, Bobby is showing Miss Wakefield his room when she tells him this story. Your sister died in my room? Well, actually, she just had a massive heart attack in here. Somehow she managed to crawl down the hallway to about right over there. <gasps> I don't know how she dragged herself with her arthritic fingers. She couldn't even open a jar of apple butter. And after that insane story, she says that she's tired and needs to rest. So she goes to sit in the living room. An hour goes by and Hank and Peggy go to wake her up. Hank says that it's getting late and he's sure that she's ready to go home. She responds with, yes, I am ready. And then she just kind of awkwardly stares at him. They ask her if she's okay, and then we're hit with this bombshell. My life was spent here in this house. That's why there's no place else in the world that I would rather end my days. End your days? Yes, I want to die here. I promise not to be a nuisance. Yeah, so personally, I think that's like the craziest thing that you could ask somebody, especially after knowing them for like less than a day. Like, hey, can I die in your house? What? Anyway, of course, Hank tells her no and tells her that she's not being a very good guest. Peggy calls her a taxi and says that that's the least they can do, but that's all they're going to do. Miss Wakefield tries to make them feel bad by saying that she's an old lady and you don't want me to be happy. And Hank shuts her down and says, no, not that way. She says, OK, and stands up to leave. But then she runs behind their Christmas tree and just starts begging for them to let her do it. Miss Wakefield, please. I promise not to drag this out. I, I bet it won't take me more than two days, at most three. You keep her busy. I'll sneak up from behind and poke her with this driver. You got me that driver I wanted? She's headed for the bathroom! The taxi pulls up and Hank tries to get her out of the house. Switch over to Dale, Bill, and Boomhauer and they're trying to figure out a good bed and breakfast theme. They hear Miss Wakefield from across the street and... Why are you picking on that old lady, Shug? I'm not picking on her. She wants to die in my house. Please, show some compassion. The taxi drives away and Miss Wakefield and everyone stares at Hank like he's in the wrong. 
Like, what? This is the most frustrating episode? I cannot imagine any scenario where it would be okay to ask somebody to die in their house, let alone a stranger. And the fact that all the neighbors are, like, siding with this old woman? Ugh, I, I just, I cannot. So the next morning, the guys are in the alley, and Hank is trying to explain what happened. That gives Dale the idea of having Miss Wakefield die in his house, so that the bed and breakfast theme can be a haunted house. Honestly, not a bad idea. Please, Hank, let Ms. Wakefield die in my house. Please, please, please! Hank feels exactly how I would feel and says that everyone has gone crazy and no one is dying in his house, or Dale's house. And then of course, Bill hits us with this line, which is like one of the most depressing things I've ever heard. I'll probably die in my house, wedged behind the bathroom door, inaccessible to the paramedics. Well, what can you do? God, what a depressing thing to say. I'm sorry, Bill. Hank is decorating the house for the party, and he says he can't believe he feels guilty for telling her no. Just then, the doorbell rings, and when Hank goes to answer it, it's Miss Wakefield at the door. She apologizes for causing such a scene and asks if she can use the bathroom. Hank tells her yes, and then he thinks about it for a moment. I know what you're trying to do. You don't need to use the bathroom, you just want to die in there, don't you? He blocks her from entering the house and eventually gets the door shut. As she's kicking Hank's door, Dale taps on her shoulder and tells her he has a proposition. Fast forward and Miss Wakefield is in Dale's basement, while Dale is trying to convince her to die in his house. Well, you'd be getting in on the ground floor of a wonderful investment opportunity, and all you really have to do is make two appearances a day from the afterlife via this old antique mirror. It's not hard work, but I do expect quality. Are there any questions? Miss Wakefield seems very uninterested, to say the least, and gets up to leave. Now we go back to the Hills house where Hank and Peggy are going Christmas shopping and leaving Bobby alone. They remind him to keep the door locked, and they leave. But later that night... Let me in, Bobby! I have a peppermint. At the mall, the Hills run into John Redcorn, and he tries to convince them to let Miss Wakefield die in their house, by telling them that his people must be happy at death or they walk throughout eternity on their hands, so their frowns appear like smiles. That's, uh... Uh, that's a pretty dark. Right after that, Bobby calls Hank and tells him that Miss Wakefield is on the roof. He runs home and Hank finds her hiding behind the house. Hank decides that he needs to call the police and then he has her charged with trespassing. Thank you for being so prompt, officers. There's the trespasser I called about. Her? You want us to arrest that poor old woman? And now, for some reason that I still do not understand, the entire neighborhood is acting like Hank is the crazy one. As the police car pulls away, we see Miss Wakefield in the back seat, and then we see everybody staring at Hank in disgust. The next day in the alley, all the guys are still giving Hank crap about having her arrested, and that's when Peggy walks up with this newspaper. Hank, I do not want you to blame yourself, but Miss Wakefield died at a bus station the very night you had her arrested and dragged away. What? Good Lord, she was a retired Sunday school teacher. Now, Hank... I don't want you to dwell on the awful things you said to her out of anger. Listen, I'm not saying I was happy when Peggy said that Miss Wakefield was gone, but I'm also not saying I wasn't happy. So, take that how you will. That same night, when the Hills get back from grocery shopping, they come home and turn their lights on. If I have to explain it... <gasps> Miss Wakefield. They end up splitting up to try to find her. After Peggy's failed attempt to have Ladybird sniff her out, we see Luann and Bobby searching in a bedroom. Eventually, Hank does find her in a closet. After a quick jump scare, she explains that she's desperate and submitted a fake obituary to get everyone's guard down. The doorbell goes off, and it's the neighbors all coming over for the Christmas party. Hank tries to carry Miss Wakefield out through the party, but everyone starts to gang up on him and finally talks him into letting her stay. All right, fine. If that's how everyone feels, Ms. Wakefield, if you want to die in my house, then go ahead. Really? Merry Christmas. For some reason, she chooses to go sit in this chair that's in the middle of the party and she closes her eyes. Of course, everybody at the party gets extremely uncomfortable. Oh, I get it. Now that everybody is affected by this, it's not a good idea. Okay. Even Miss Wakefield herself feels uncomfortable and tells Hank maybe she can come back another time, when it's not so inappropriate. I'm not sure when this would ever be appropriate, but continue. She tells Hank that maybe she can come back and die when they're not entertaining. Hank tells her she doesn't need to come back to die. She can just come back to visit. Maybe join us for a cookout or sit under the tree you planted. That would be nice. I could title this video, The Strangest Episode of King of the Hill. And you know what? It would be pretty accurate. 
I think it's crazy that the episode ends with her just accepting that she can come back to visit, as if that wasn't a possibility this entire time. Like, come on, Miss Wickfield, you knew Hank for 30 seconds and he invited you in for dinner. Of course he would have invited you back any other time you wanted. And don't even get me started on the entire neighborhood turning their back on Hank because he doesn't want this old woman to die in his house. The house that he is currently raising his family in. The house that has his 13-year-old son in it. Is Bobby 13? Or is Bobby 12? I don't remember. 13 or 12. Regardless, what a crazy request and I... It frustrates me so much that like everybody acts like Hank's the crazy one and I'm just sitting there watching it like, what? It seems like the episode really wants us to be on Mrs. Wakefield's side. And maybe I'm crazy and everyone else is going to disagree with me, I don't know, but I am definitely not on her side. What about you? What would you do if this happened to you? Would you let this woman come into your house to die or would you tell her to kick rocks? I am like genuinely curious, so like let me know in the comments. And with all of that being said, thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I am currently working on my next video, so hopefully I can get that out for you guys soon. And until next time, peace. Real quick before I go, as I was writing this, the voice of Dale Gribble, Johnny Hardwick, passed away. So I really want to do a, um, a Dale Gribble focused uh, video. So if you guys have any episodes that are just focused on Dale or majority focused on Dale, please let me know. Sorry, I'm not, I didn't write anything, so I'm just kind of going off the top of my head here. So uh, bear with me. Uh, but I'd really appreciate it. I have a couple episodes in my head that I think would go really well. But with that being said, I'd, if you guys have suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Alrighty, now, now the video's over. Bye.